of a kingdom, not religion. Not religion. Our message leads you into it's a kingdom message. So when you come here, you can see things different. You can see something opposite of what you have ever done before. All I want you to do is just to just relax your heart and and see if this this thing is leading is flooding rest in your heart. Is leading you close to God's intimacy, or is it bringing out restlessness from you? You might not have had it before. All of us are raised in a in a particular understanding, including me, including me. All of us. So. But when the truth of God comes forth, your mind might not know, your spirit knows. Your spirit knows the truth. Yeah. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord bears witness in my heart, in my spirit, you know, that I'm a son of God. That there is going to be a witness in your spirit through the rest supply. That the teaching is a supply of rest. It's a supply of intimacy, closeness to God. All man, all God has ever won for man is closeness with him. Alright? So if you've never had something before and I say it and the thing is taking you close to God, is opening your heart for relationship, for intimacy. Do not put, put away the something you know before and just think twice about this. Don't just throw it away. Just like this topic right now, the kingdom has come. The kingdom has come because all that you know is that the kingdom will come. All that you have been teached about, all that you have been preached, all that we know as Christians is that the kingdom is about to come. Everyone is waiting for the kingdom. Everyone. Some people have said, some people said it's going to come 2,000 years ago. I remember when I was a, little, a teenager, the, the year 2000 was a turning point. Everybody said, God, God Jesus is going to come. That time, some of us, some people left school, some people left business, some people closed everything. You know, but he still didn't come because he has come without us knowing that he has come. Up to today, the, the Judaism are still waiting for Messiah. The Messiah came without them knowing that he came, and they are still waiting for him. Now, the Christianity is still waiting for the second coming of Jesus, and he came without us knowing. So. This is blowing your mind already right now. You know, if you know the Bible. You know. So today's topic is the kingdom has come. If you are here on Wednesday or Friday, you will connect the teaching with thoughts, you know, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You know, so the kingdom has come. Our one thing that God never promised us. I want you to just Search your Bible after this thing I said I said to you right now. One thing that God never promised us is heaven. God never promised us heaven. He promised us the kingdom. He promised us the kingdom of God. He never promised us heaven. Okay? And God never promised us heaven. You know? He promised us the kingdom. And I want you to understand that Pastor Fever is not against heaven. It's not against heaven. You know, the, king, heaven, the kingdom of God is not heaven. Alright? The kingdom of God is not in heaven. Heaven is in the kingdom of God. Alright? Heaven and both heaven and earth are in the kingdom of God. Both heaven and earth are in the kingdom of God. You know? If you if you understand this, for you to understand this very well, you will understand our teaching about the predestination, the revelation of God as eternity. God is eternity, and eternity is everything. There is nothing outside eternity. Everything is eternity. In eternity. You know, there's a picture they gave you that God is in heaven. You know, it's just like it's saying that eternity is in heaven. No, heaven is in God. Heaven is in God. Every, both heaven and earth are in eternity. Nothing is outside eternity. We, we spoke this picture. We spoke this message some time ago. So for you to understand the kingdom of God, you must understand God himself. For you to understand, the, the, because the kingdom of God actually means the system of God. The system of God. For you to understand the system of God, you must understand God himself. 
If you don't understand who God is, you won't understand his system. So who is God? He is eternity. God is not a religious being. He is eternity being. He is eternity. And nothing is outside eternity. Everything is in eternity. Everything that exists, exists in eternity. Nothing exists outside eternity. You cannot journey, 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 and journey out of eternity. No, everything is in the womb of eternity. Everything is in the womb of eternity. Now, you know, see, the, 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 the person of God, God is not in eternity. God is eternity himself. Amen. God is eternity himself. And when you understand it, you understand that everything is in God. So we have dealt on that issue. It's an amazing revelation. You, you come, God is not a religious God. He's eternity being. He's eternity being. Heaven and earth are in Him. The Bible said in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Not in the beginning of God. In the beginning of creation. So God created heaven and earth. So where, we are God, where was God before He created heaven? Where was God before He created heaven? So if God lives in heaven, where was he living before he created? So, but, but see, if you, if you understand this, you everything will change about you. God is a being, it's just like a house, and everything is in it. Everything, both heaven and earth, you know, everything, there are many things to be said that we said before, are in God, are in eternity. Everything is in eternity. Just let the child, let the child close the mouth a little bit, you know. So... So you, you will understand that even if you're gonna go to even if you're gonna go to heaven, even if after here right now there is a location, a place called heaven, but God the, the promise of God to us as you're gonna see it is not actually heaven, it's the kingdom of God. His kingdom, his kingdom, his kingdom, not heaven, alright? It's just like it just like that is a there's a government. When you understand the word kingdom, you understand the word system, system. There's a government of America, there's a, a, a one government that, of, that oppresses both America and, and Namibia. One government, and everybody that is on this government had this title, had this benefit. Okay, so this government controls America and Namibia. So whether you're in Namibia or in, in America, you are in that government. You understand? Yeah. So the government is not in America. The government, the America and the Namibia are in the government, are in the system, are in the domain. You get me, right? Yes. So, so shift your mind about we are going to heaven. We are going. God never promised you because if you understand the word of God, you begin to live in the reality of the Bible. Say every promise of God is been fulfilled in Christ. Every promise of God in Christ is yes and amen. So all the promise of God from eternity to eternity has been fulfilled. Including the journey of going to both your past, present, and future have been fulfilled in Christ. You know, so both your journey, our journey is not, it's not a heaven. Our journey, you know, God did not promise to take us there. He promised to bring a kingdom to, man, to mankind. You understand me, right? So if you understand this, you will begin to understand. So the kingdom of God is a system where God is a system where God is God alone. It's a system where God is where God alone is involved. I want you to, if we have talked about the kingdom of men and the kingdom of God, right? The kingdom of men is a realm where men rules. We are men dominant. We are men. That, that is what is operating here on earth right now. It's not, it's not a location. It's a system that is operating. And it is in religion and it's in worldliness. A real we are men dominates. A real we are men are in charge. In charge of their life. That is when they tell you that your future is in your head. Your future is in your mouth. If you don't open your mouth, nothing will happen. If you don't fast and pray, nothing will happen because you are in charge. You, are, you, are, you, you have the, the key to the door. This realm of the kingdom of men, God is not in charge. You have to invite God to come into your life. If you, you, you are in charge because you can shut God out, you can invite him in. This is the kingdom of men. God is not a king here. You are the king. Man is a king here. God is not a king. You know, and the devil took them to the, to the, to 
to the advantage of men and begin to rule in this kingdom. In this kingdom, and men not invite the devil in their lives and all that, but men are the king, men are the, the in charge here. If you may even in Jesus, in this reign, which is the reign Jesus finished on the cross, in this reign, if God wants to come into your life, he takes the permission from you. The picture of Jesus standing at your door, what do I always say this thing, is not at your door and he's knocking because he is not the king here. Amen. He does not rule here. You are the one ruling, so he knocks at your door. If you open, he enters. If you reject him, he goes. This is not the character of a king. When the Bible says his kingdom come, he's not talking about this reign. Not talking about this realm of religion. The kingdom of men is a realm where men, men, men are involved. Devil is involved. God is involved. There are three pictures here. But God is a, just a partner. God is your partner with you. You play your part, he plays his part. Because this is not in charge here. It's just like, you know, he's not in charge. There is, is it that the devil is behind what is happening to you? Or you are behind what is happening to you? Or God is behind what is happening to you? You are the one in charge. Is it that you give God permission or you give the devil permission? You know, see, this is a reign. A reign of... This is a realm of humanity. The kingdom of men is operating in religion, is operating in worldliness. The worldliness and religion are in the same kingdom. So in this place, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't look at you as a, you are a Christian. You are born again. We look at you. Are you in the kingdom of men or in the kingdom of God? Are you in the system of it is not finished or in the system of it is finished? It's not about religion. Do you get me? It's not why we are going to church. You are a pastor. You have this church. You have this crowd. No, it's about which realm are you into. Yeah. We don't look at you. You are a Christian. You are this. You are that. We look at you. Are you in the realm of it is finished? Or in the realm of it is not? Are you in the kingdom of men? Because what religion and what liness? And this, no religion used to think what liness and people are lost. They are also in the reign of lust. The reign where a, a system where the thief coming to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil has access here. The devil exists here. Amen. There is a reign, devil exists. But there is a kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. You understand? The kingdom of God is a system where God alone is involved. Yes. Awesome. It's just like you and I. You no, know, we, we went to your house. We went to the house of Tony, you know. Tony is here. Tony invited us to his house. We just played, we do all this thing. Me, you and John, Tony, you know. So she had, no matter how freedom she gives me, she's it's still her house, okay? You know, she, she and my house of freedom, or John has some freedom. She favored John or favored me. Maybe I'm, I'm the devil. John is God. And she favored John. I don't want to use John now as a devil. Let me use myself as a devil. You know, I'm the devil. John is God. And she favored going John more and favored, and favored me less. But don't know But now I enter my house. When I'm in my house, I'm in charge of my house. Right? I have left her place and I come to my house, my home, my, my, my kingdom. You know, even though, yeah, she's my friend. When she is in my house now, I am in charge. You get me? When I'm in her house, if I want to enter, you know, if I want to use her, 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 toy, her bedroom, or if I want to use her fridge, I will take permission from her. But now, when I am in my house, you like take permission from her to enter into my fridge? Do you get me this? We are talking about the kingdom. There is a kingdom of men. We are God is there, devil is there, man is there, and all that. God takes permission. The, the, the realm of faith, believe. Believe for it to happen to you. Confess. The realm of we are, you know, this, 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 this year is ending. January, everybody will be fasting, praying. It's a realm we are, we possess our destiny. We, this is a realm of the kingdom of men. Amen. All right? The kingdom of men. God is not in charge here. You invite him. If you don't call upon the name of the Lord, you won't be saved. It's a kingdom of men. But there is a kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a place. It's a system. A system. There is a system. A system where God alone is involved. A realm where only, only one being exists. God. Alright? A realm where you are a slave to it. Everything, no, no other thing exists there but God alone. 
But I want you to understand our teaching. The kingdom has come because this kingdom is, is, is a reality right now. Reality. The kingdom of God is a realm of God alone. It's a realm of God alone. Hey, when we understand this, when you, I want you to come into, I want you to come into, into this experience. There is an experience. That is why I said, I told you, the quality of the word of God in you is the quality of heaven, the quality of the kingdom, the quality of God you will experience in your life. There is a realm. There is a, there is a realm where God alone exists. The kingdom of God is, is, is a realm of God alone. A realm of God alone. A realm of life alone. A, a realm of light alone. So that the kingdom of men, which is, which is the system of Adamic nature, which Jesus finished on the cross, is a system where there is death and there is life. There is light and there is darkness. Yes. There is good and there is bad. You know, there, there is devil and there is God. But the, the, the kingdom of God is a realm where it's God alone. It's life alone. It's light alone. It's, it's, it's aloneness. It's not a realm. You know, it's a realm of God alone. Everything is God alone. It's a realm of God's unconditional dominion. Unconditional. When the Bible says your kingdom come, we're going to get back, get to that. You know, the kingdom of God is a realm where, you know, God, you know, God owns you. It's not a realm of partnership. It's a realm of ownership. It's a realm of ownership. When man is owned by God. And he has all the permission to walk in your life without your permission, without your involvement, without your awareness. Religion has not come to that. The world has not come to this reign. The world has not come. It's a reign where the will of God happens to you unconditionally without your involvement, without your will, without your purpose. It's a reign where every other will has been submitted when you just just have a picture of a kingdom, the kingdom of a man. I don't know you people don't have king, kings and kingdoms in this country. In this country, there, is, there are places where there are kings and they have kingdoms. When you come into the kingdom of a man, his word is power. His word is life. His word is life. His will rules. Everything about him rules. You can even use your president as a as a this thing. When you, any man that is in a you know, the, the president of the country, if that president is a mess, that country will be a mess. Because his will dominates, his system dominates. You get me, right? There is a kingdom, there is a realm of God alone. A realm where that God is in complete dominion. A realm where there is, there is only one faith, God's faith alone. There is only one wisdom, God's wisdom alone. There is only one righteousness, God righteousness alone. There is only one faithfulness, God faithfulness alone. There is only one thing, only one identity, God identity alone. Only, but all you do is you, 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 you rest in God alone. You rest in God's wisdom, you rest in God's will. And only one thing, one person exists, God alone. There is a realm where the devil does not exist. Like the religion and the world are still in the realm where the devil exists. I want to tell you the truth. There is a kingdom that has come. Yes, yeah. There is a day you are in this world, but you are not in the system of the. There is another system that Jesus brought to us on earth. Amen. There is a kingdom where there is devil free, where there is man free, where the realm where man's will does not prevail. Devil's will does not prevail. Your own will does not prevail. Yeah. Only his will prevails over your life. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, and this is for my blessing. This is for my favor. Yeah. Because when you say you are not enough, God said you are enough. So it's not about what you say. It's about what God says. Yeah. Wow. When you say you are not good, God says you are good. Yeah. When you don't believe in yourself, God believes in you. Yeah. When you say you will die young, God says you will live long. And it's not about what you say, it's not about what someone or enemy says, it's about what God has said. It's like right here, God's will prevail. Yes. And this realm, this realm, this realm is in existence right now. Hallelujah. You begin to understand the reason why Jesus come on, come on the cross. You begin to understand that we have the bunch of believers that are unbelievers of the kingdom, unbelievers of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
a system of, of it is finished. That is a kingdom of God. When you when you when you replace the word kingdom with the word system, system. So it's not a picture, it's a system. For example, there is a system running in this church. Let's use it for example. And this system, the system of our message affects our worship, affects our everything. There is, there is a system. There's a system of men. There's a system of God. The kingdom, you know, the kingdom of God is, 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 is the thing that Jesus came to establish upon us here on earth. I want us to read this scripture. There are many scriptures to read this morning, but you know, I just want to say a few things on it, and then but I could just dwell on them very much. So family, family, you are you don't you don't want you to wait until you leave this body before you begin to enjoy the kingdom, before you begin to enjoy the benefit of of the finished work of Christ. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. Alright, so I, I just want to have only one thing to say in this scripture. I just want to read right now. Many things to say in it at other times. After this manner, therefore pray you, our Father which are in heaven, honored be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I want you to get this, family. Great generation are not the preachers of Apostle Paul's message. We are not the preachers of Apostle James, Apostle Peter, and all. We are the preachers of, the, of Jesus' message. Every other apostle, every other preacher came on earth telling you that you are going, God is taking you to his kingdom. He yeah, is taking you to his kingdom. Jesus is the only one that had a different mindset that his kingdom will come. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is the only one that has, you know, all, all, the, all the other teachers and all this telling you, preparing you for, you know, to, for God to take you to his kingdom somewhere. But Jesus came, Jesus gave you a mindset that he said, he said preach to the Father, said, let your kingdom come. Come on earth, your will be done on earth. Oh, wow. sure. Let me give you a picture that until you leave this earth, you will not experience divinity. But the, the, the Jesus had the, the Jesus had a different picture. He is the only one that gave that preached a message or that gave you a concept of the kingdom coming on earth. Oh. This is this is done. Just one thing I want to bring out from here. Many things to be said in this scripture. All right, so let's let's read this scripture right now. Let's read John chapter fourteen. All right, many things to be said. Very, very many things to be said. John chapter fourteen, from verse one to three, says, "Let not your heart be troubled." Jesus said, "You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions." I was reading this last night. I was just laughing. I'm just smiling. I was like, "How could I just explain this?" To these people, many things in me, many things, many things, many things. How can I, when I use the word in my father's house, you know, people have this mentality, heaven, that is a house there and all that. All right, let's read it, verse 2 again. Say, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that you will be also. Many things to be said on this. He said, I come to prepare a place for you. Jesus said this thing before he went to the cross. The question I want to ask you, you know, where did he, you know, where did he prepare the place for us? And when did he do that? You know, he, that this picture was a picture of, okay, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to build a house for you, and all that. And when I come there, you know, and I will come and take you back, you know, that's a picture of, I'm going to heaven to prepare a place for you, and all that. No, you know, Jesus, the Bible says we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery. All right, the wisdom of God in the mystery. Jesus is not a physical being, and many things to, to, to tell you, family. Okay, okay, when you have that picture, I go to prepare a place. That means that right now, Jesus is preparing a place for us. But it's not true. The, the, place, the, 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 the place Jesus prepared for us, the, the, where he prepared a place for us was on the cross. See, let me tell you, family, man lost his place in God by Adam, spiritually. 
You know, the place he's talking about is not a physical thing. It's a spiritual position. It's a, it's a spiritual position. It's not talking about the house. It's, it's a spiritual... There, there was a scene between man and God. Man was not able to be in God. There was no place for man in God because of the sin nature of man. Yeah. There was no place. There was no place. You know, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place. I go to prepare. Now, this is what happened on the cross. Wow. On the cross is where he prepared a place for us. Amen. Hiya. On the place is it, on the cross is where he prepared a kingdom for us. Yes. Amen. And on the cross is a place where he, where he came and took us. Where he is is where we are right now. Then we understand this. It has already happened. Hiya. This is a spiritual position. It's a spiritual place. Boy. Ah, God, this is, all, this is amazing. When Jesus says it is finished, means that he has prepared the place for us. Amen. When Jesus said it is finished, means that he has come and has collected us to him. Where he is is where we are now. Amen. Hey, yes. hey, this is amazing. We are coming to oneness with Jesus. Amen. We are come, he, he brought us into his own righteousness. He brought us into his own identity. Yes. He brought us into, the Bible says, as he is, so are we right now yes. in this world. Amen. So when you read this scripture, you see it from, it is finished. Yeah. When Jesus said it is finished, boy, he has prepared a place for us. Uh -huh. And he has taken us to himself. Yes. Where he is, is where we are right now. Amen. At the cross, Jesus prepared a place for us. All of us read, read this scripture right now. And the, the kingdom of God is a place called Christ. Amen. I want you to get this. The, if, if you miss this, you just missed it. The kingdom of God is not a heaven. It's a place called in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Let's read if, if, if Ephesians. Ephesians chapter chapter one verse ten. If you read this thing from the from the from verse one, you begin to say, see, ah, many things to be said on this. God says, the Bible says He chose us but from verse four. Before the foundation of the world, He He loved us, chose us, you know, to be in Him in Christ. You know, He predestined us to be in Him. You know, this, from the foundation of the world. God, the plan of God was not to take us to, to earth or to heaven or to anywhere, but to take us in Christ. In Christ. Now look at, look at verse 10. Verse 10 says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times. Hey, Jesus. Amen. That's something I want to say right now, but let's just... The, the, the plan of God, which he fulfilled on the cross, was to bring in both heaven and earth. Into one place called Christ. Hallelujah. Called Christ. Yeah. There is a place called Christ Jesus. Amen. There is a place called in Christ. Mm. Many things to be said. And I would, but my happiness is that it is flowing there. You, know, uh, you are understanding the message. You are understanding. So I don't, don't need to explain more. Look, 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 let's, let's read this. Let's read uh, 2 Corinthians verse, verse 5 and 7. 17 verse 5. So come Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He says, Therefore, if any man is in. I want you to, when you begin to read the scripture, you begin to see the deepness of it. You know, you know when you read the scripture from the religious mindset, you miss a lot of things. The word in, in. If any man is in Christ. Wow. Family, today's topic is the kingdom. I want you to change your mindset. The kingdom is a system called in Christ. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. In Christ. In Christ Jesus. God's plan is to bring both heaven and earth into a system called Christ. Wow. Into a system called Christ. So the people in heaven right now are not better than you. Because the people in heaven and you are you know, in a system called Christ. Amen. You are the same quality of life called Christ. Amen. Just like 
the same thing I told you, Namibians and America, in one system called Christ. So there is no difference between the location. It's about the system. The joy, the happiness, the fulfillment. So the, the, the fulfillment that the people in heaven has right now, you can have it. So the religion has given you a mindset until, until you, you go to heaven, you will not have peace. Hallelujah. Until you, until you, you know, this place is a place where you will endure for to the end. Or they, you know, they want to be rescued from here. See, see, if you have everything you need, there are some people that are more, much fine here in Namibia than people that are, that are in America. Yeah. Much fine, and if, even if you give them visa to go to America, they won't go, they are, they, are, they are okay here. You know, if you understand the finished work of Christ, Amen. you understand that the quality in the quality of life in heaven is the quality of life you have right now. Oh, yeah. Not in return, you will not be rushing, rushing to heaven. You will not be waiting for Jesus to come and rescue you every time. No, you can. You will live in a, in a full capacity of, of God's goodness, God's destiny over your life right now. Amen. You know, arise and shine for your light has come. Your light is not about to come. Boy, see, if you have a good, if you have a food, eat it well. Enjoy your life. Jesus has see, lived in the quality kind of life on earth. Amen. Stop waiting for heaven. Yes. Stop, stop waiting for heaven. The kingdom has come. Yes. Yes. The reign of it is finished has happened. Amen. You know, religion has a mindset that until you leave this earth to heaven, you will not be free from the devil. No, you are already, you can be, you can live a life of devil free here on this earth. Because there is a realm, there is a realm you are into, and that realm is God in Christ. In Christ, we always ask, "I wish I just know your name." I'm just asking you right now. Do you think that the devil is in Christ? The Bible, the Bible already says, "If any man is in Christ, there is a realm called in Christ." Is the devil in Christ? No. <laughs> the devil is not in Christ. So, if there is a place called Christ. Where yeah, the devil does not exist. It's stopping you. You can you, you who are you who is in that Christ now is devil free. Yes. Yeah. You get me? Yes. It's devil free. Hallelujah. That's a location. We are in Christ. We are you know whether you know the Bible or you don't know the Bible, you know that devil cannot be in Christ. Yes. So and and and, and the, the Bible is telling you that the reality of being in Christ is real right now. Yeah. That means you can be in a place where the devil cannot be in. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Yes. He is a new creature. All things have passed away. You have caught up with the with the message. Now nah, give me this keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> the guy has caught up with this revelation. He don't want to play anymore. <laughs> oh boy, I give you all the praise today. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying you, family, because your spirit is so alive. Yeah, you are understanding this. This message is so simple and so it's so even a man is in Christ. The world, the kingdom of God is being in Christ. And the Bible said, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We have a lot to say on that, and we have said on it. So the, 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 the major word here is being in Christ. The destination of God's children is in Christ, which has already happened. We are in Christ. Jesus came to take us from Adam into Christ, into himself. Do you know that on the cross, your salvation did not happen because you changed? I want you to get this thing right now. Your salvation did not happen because you changed. Because people used to think, only when I came up on the pulpit and I gave my life to God and all that. No. Your salvation happened when, when Jesus gave his life. For us, all right. Not the one when you get, not when you gave your life to Christ. Now I want you to get this again. Your salvation did not happen, you know, when you changed. Your salvation happened when God changed. I want you to get this. Your salvation happened when God changed His mind, His His way of seeing us. Before the cross, God was seeing us in Adam. He was seeing that is a real God, Adam. And many are, many, that realm has ended, even though you see your brethren, many are there. Okay? There is a realm called Adam. 
You know, God was saying, man and Adam, no matter how good you are, you wear, no matter how nice you wear, you are still in Adam. You are in Adam's sin, you are in Adam's judgment, you are in Adam's condemnation. Every curse that was upon Adam was on you. So it wasn't about you, it was a, it was a place where you are. It was a place where you were dead. Do you, you get this simple thing? You were in Adam. And all that God see, saw was Adam. When he saw you, he saw you, he saw Adam. He saw Adam. And every curse he laid, he laid, he laid concerning Adam was on man. Now, on the cross, on the cross, the mind of God changed. God changed from seeing us in Adam to seeing us in Christ. That is when our salvation happened. Our salvation happened in the mind of God, not in your mind. Not in your mind. It did not happen when, when you saw it. It happened when God saw it. When, when, when there was an exchange. When, God, when, when the, the mind of God changed from seeing us in Adam's sin into Christ. When the location changed on the cross, that was when your salvation happened. That was when your salvation happened. Your salvation happened 2,000 years ago. So the, the preaching of the kingdom is for people to realize that they are saved, not that they will be saved. So this is how, how different we are from others. The preaching of the kingdom is to, for people to realize that the kingdom has come, not that the kingdom will come. Amen. The kingdom is a realm in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. Christ is our destination. And he has already happened. Okay, I wanted to get this point again. The kingdom of God is a life at the right hand of the Father. Alright, I wanted to get this so amazingly. The kingdom of God is a life at the is a life at the right hand of the Father. A life. A rest life in God. I'm gonna read some scriptures right now. A life in God's rest. See, before we read the scripture, I wanted to begin to get this, no? Uh, okay, let's read this scripture. If you, Ephesians. Wow, this is so beautiful. Ephesians chapter chapter one from verse from verse seventeen to to twenty three. The kingdom of God is a life at the right hand of the Father. Wow, many things to be said, but many scriptures, many things to. But just let me just maintain my word right now. A rest life in God, a life in God's rest, a life in the finished work of Christ. Let's read Ephesians. That's from, from verse 17. Now look at what we read. We read this scripture on Wednesday, on Friday. It said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation of the knowledge of, of, of him. Many things. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Wow. That you might, you might know what is the hope of his calling. What are the, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in Christ? Many things to be said, family. All you just need is the eyes of your understanding being enlightened to know what has already happened, to know what, that the kingdom has already come. So the difference between you and the and, and, and religious people out there is what you know that they don't know. It, it has, the reality has already happened, but the eyes of their understanding is not yet enlightened. Verse, verse Verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heaven. Now, I want you to see, the Bible gives you a picture that God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand. All right? Now, the word right hand, Seated at the right hand is not talking about right hand side. No, it's not talking about the location. It's not. It's not. It's not saying God is sitting. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. Right, right hand side. No, it's talking about the realm of rightness. It's talking about the realm of rightness. All right. This is not what I. But he, he just seated at his right hand. Okay. But just know that it's not. It's not. God is not sitting in heaven and. Uh, no. God is eternity. Everything is in Him. Heaven and earth, light and 
everything is in him, okay? Okay, but he, he gets a picture saying he rose him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in, in, in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers and dominion. Ay, do you get that? He said, far above, okay, let me, let me show you. All right, verse, uh, verse 21, far above principalities and powers and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also on the, the age to come. He, he put all things under his feet. Wow. All things. All things under his feet. And gave, he, and gave him to be head of all things to the church. Many things to be said of that. To the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Did you, did you see it here? Yes. Which is the body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Okay, but the picture I want you to get there now, the Bible says that God raised Jesus from the dead and seated, and seated him at his right hand. Amen. The right hand, like I said, like that is what we call. If I say, if I say, you know, Alu is my right hand man. My right hand man is not saying that he's standing at my right side. I mean, it's my favorite person. Do you get me? So it's not talking about uh, location or it's talking about a position. You get me. You get me. It's talking about a position, not a location. When you say someone is my right hand man, someone is my right, this man is my personal person. Alright, so that, that is a place Jesus was, was seated. So let's read this scripture right now. In uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse, from verse 4, from verse 4 to 6. Look at it, look at it. He said, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherein he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, he had quickened us together with Christ. Now, one thing I wanted to consider here is it's not that it's not a promise, it's a fulfillment. Yeah. He said when we were dead in sin, he has he has already quickened us together with Christ. And he says, By grace you are saved. And he says, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Did you get that? Did you get that? That we are your position is not talking about location, it's talking about position. The first scripture we read that that God raised Jesus and sat him at his right hand. Now we now made us to understand that we are now God raised us together with Christ and sat us together with Christ. We are sitting together with Christ right now. Right now. This is our position. Do you remember the scripture we read before? Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you that when I finish preparing, I will come and take you where I am is where you will be. Do you see that? And it's a fulfilled word now. It's no more a promise. God has quickened us together with Christ and seated us to to, to, to uh, uh, seated us together with Christ. We are sitting together with Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh, this is amazing. You know, we, we are no the, the journey has been fulfilled. We are no we are no more a generation journeying to heaven. We are the, the, the kingdom has already come. We are seated right now in the in the position of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the place God. Christ. The place of rightness. The place of rightness. The place of no condemnation. The place of... Yes, seated. <laughs> seated. <sighs> so what is seated? The kingdom of God is, is God's rest. Okay, what is the picture of city? Seated together. The word seat is rest. Do you get me right now? The word seated means rest. I, 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 I'm preaching more than you are getting this. The word seated means rest. You know, it said God raised Jesus together with us and he sat him, sat you, Jesus and I, together at his right hand. 
This is our spiritual position. Yes. Which many Christians, many children of God, have not come into the realm of seated together. Seated together. The kingdom has come. It's a place. It's a, it's a system. It's a life in the, at the right hand of God. It's a life seated at the right hand of God. Aya. Seated. Seated. Rest. And the finished work of Christ is sitting together. There is no sitting if the work is, if the work is not finished. Amen. If the work is not finished, there is no place for sitting. Yes. There is no place for sitting. Yes. God, this is amazing. Our, our, our place, family, our place is the realm of sitting. Yes. Seated Hallelujah. together. Yes. Jesus. Yes. The Bible says, it, it says it's seated together in the heavenly place. I know the reason why I use the word heavenly place because it said, it said far above principalities, powers, all yes. dominion. Yes. Far above them. It's not even above, but far above. Boy, that so even all these Christians that are fighting them are fighting. Do you see you are in the room of curse? Yes. You are not seated together far above. Yes. Wow. Far yeah. above in a room where they, they don't exist anymore. Far above. Yes. Far above. So we are not soldiers. Soldiers of the cross. In the name of Jesus, we shall conquer. No, it's not. The Bible says he has risen us together with Christ. And we are seated together with Jesus. A realm of it is finished. A realm of victory. A realm of completeness. A realm of dominion. Seated together. It's your life. It's your life. A life of sitting together. Is your life a life of sitting together? Or is your life a life of... Is your life a life of sitting? Is it a life of rest? That is the kingdom. That is a kingdom. If you are not in the rest of God, you are not in the kingdom of God. Yes. The kingdom of God is God's rest, family. The kingdom of God is seated, a place of seated together. If you are not, there is a kingdom and this kingdom has come. Jesus came to establish, he said, he said, child, come to me. You that are level and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Amen. The kingdom of God is God's rest. And until you are in God's rest, you are not in this kingdom. This kingdom has come. The only thing that remains is to enter into rest. I want you to read. Lastly, let's read the scripture. Lastly. The only thing. I want you to know this, family. Rest. That's it. Rest in the finished home. This is the kingdom that the world is waiting for. This is the kingdom that religion is And they are waiting for it in the wrong place. In the wrong place. Let me tell you. And even you are waiting for something in the right place. Even if that thing is there. And you don't know it's there. You are waiting. I, 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 with time. You, you will know it's there. But if you are waiting for a thread. A thread. In a, in, a, in, a wrong, in a wrong in a wrong place. A place that is not connected. The thread does not pass by. You will wait from now to tomorrow. From now to eternity. The, you will not meet the thread. But if you are, for example, you are waiting for, you are waiting for the kingdom, which is rest, in this kind of atmosphere, even if you don't understand it now, you keep coming to this place, and then you, one day it will open your mind. One day that rest will begin to happen to you. But, but, but religion is in a realm, it, 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 their, their location is a realm, they can never find rest, because their, their, their foundation is restlessness. The more they fight, the more they fight, the more they fight. If you are not in God's rest, you are not in God's kingdom. The kingdom has come, which is the rest of God. Now let's read this scripture. Hebrew chapter 4, verse, verse 6 and 10. Verse 9 and 10, it says, There remains therefore. But the only one thing, one thing that remains right now. One thing that remains. One to reign. One to reign. One, one location. One experience that remains for every child of God. There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. This is the kingdom of God. What remains over us now is not the day that God will come and rapture us here. It's not the day this will happen. It's a day, it's a rest in God. It's entering into rest. That is what remains. That is what remains for every child of God. Yeah. For the Bible said there remains means that other ones have been finished, right? Yeah. Other ones, one thing nice, what left 
is for us to be, you know, experience, come into the come into the experience of the kingdom. The promised land, you know, the promised land, the kingdom land God promised the children of Israel was the picture of the spiritual land, the spiritual place God rests. Because God told them that I'm gonna I'm gonna send you, I will send you to a, a, a land that is flowing with milk and honey. A, 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 a land, a, a, a finished land, a land that is already finished, that is already flowing with milk and honey. Do you get me? Do you get me? Now look at the strategy before I just read this give and we just close right now. God, this land that God wanted to give to the children of Israel, we are, we are occupied by giants. They were occupied by giants. Now, now look at what happened. Look at how God does things. Look at family. You know, you know, when Caleb and, uh, and Joshua went to, to, uh, to examine the land, they came back and they just knew we are discouraged because he said that the people that were occupying the land, we are giants and we are like, the, we are like a, a grasshopper at their, at their presence, you know. But they don't know it's a blessing. It was a blessing that God allowed the giants to occupy the land that God is, that he is coming to bring to them. Do you know why? Because the giants, God allowed the, the giants to be in that place. The, the, the giant built houses of end of giants, built farmings of giants, built crops. Every they use their giant capacity to build the place. Do you get me, boy? It was a blessing of that only the hand of giants can, can produce. Even the the the, 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 the time that we are coming back, they said that the, 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 the carry some fruit, some fruit from that land. If only uh, all, one person cannot carry all fruit, or two people, because it's a crop, you know, planted by giants, a, a, a blessing, a, a giant kind of blessing. God allowed giants to, to be to occupy their land and use their ability to build a uh, boy. Christ is my beauty. Christ is my wisdom. 
Christ is my righteousness. True righteousness is resting in Christ's righteousness. True faith is resting in Christ's faith. Amen. Don't try to have your own faith. Amen. Don't try to have your own righteousness. Rest in Christ's righteousness. Rest in Christ, my righteousness. Amen. In Christ, my holiness. Amen. In Christ, my wisdom. In Christ, my destiny. In Christ, my future. In Christ, my everything. This is the kingdom, family. When you come to this point where I am in Christ, my help, my, my past, present, and future is Christ. My up, up, and, up and down is Christ. Everything around me is Christ. All I see is Christ. In my darkness, I see Christ. In my light, I see Christ. In my weakness, I see Christ. In my strength, I see Christ. In my mountain, I see Christ. In my valley, I see Christ. He is all in all. This is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the reign of God alone. All I see is Him. And this is worship. When you come into this reign, this is worship. This is prayer. This is spirituality. This is faith. That is why we are rest generation. Because we rest in all of Him and none of anything else. We give you all the praise, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your kingdom has come. Can we just worship you? We give you all the praise, Lord. We give you all the worship, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for you are good, Lord. Your name is exalted, Lord. It is finished over my life. I am in the kingdom of God. I'm in the realm of the system of God. God's realm, God's system works in my life. Only His will is done. His will alone is done in my life. We glorify your name, Jesus. We glorify your name, Lord. Thank you, Holy Father. Many other plans in a man's heart, but God's will prevails. There's a, a, a dimension where only His will prevails in my life. Family, can you begin to see yourself resting in God's, in God's provision? It's about His qualification, not my qualification. It's about His wisdom, not my wisdom. It just rest in God's ability right now, rest in God's possibility. The Bible says with men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Just rest on Him. Cast yourself on Him. Cast yourself on your Father. We love you, O oh God. We love you, Jesus. We give you all the praise, Lord. We deserve all the worship. I just want you to just, just, just take a smile and just worship Him right now. Just worship Him right now. Lord, we love you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Wow. When you receive this kind of message, all you can say is thank you, Lord. It's not a time of binding and casting. It's a time of worship. Worship the Lord. We love you, God. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
Jesus.
Father Afri. Uh, thank you for blessing us. Thank you for we have blessed you. Thank you for our life is worship, God. He gave me all the worship. Family, I want you to know right now, know that you are in the realm called the kingdom of God. The kingdom has come. The kingdom of God is the will of God. The kingdom of God is God's will dominating over my life. The realm where his will has been established upon me. The will of man will not come to pass. The will of anything, the will of the devil will not come. I've been set free. I've been redeemed. Redeemed from the will of man. Redeemed from the will of the devil. Redeemed from anything else except Jesus. Except God. Except life. And life alone. The Bible says we have eternal life in Christ right now. We have eternal life. A brain of life and life and life alone. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, I just feel God's presence. So beautiful right now. The anointing of eternal life, the anointing of His will is going to search through your being right now. It's going to search through your being right now. And if there is any sickness, it's going to be you.